All right, I guess we'll go ahead and get started with song number 39. Song number 39. He keeps me singing. When you find your place, we'll do verses 1, 2, uh, and 5. We'll just do verses 1, first, second, and last. Verses 1, 2, and 5. Song number 39. He keeps me singing. Verses 1, 2, and 5. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked, my sin and strife, and discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Standing this morning, please. Let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning, Lord. We ask the Lord to be with the service we have this morning, Lord. We ask the Lord to be with those that are here today, Lord, that you would speak to them, Lord. You prepare our hearts for the message this morning, Lord. We ask the Lord uh, to be with those who are listening via live stream or watch the recording later, Lord, that you would. Uh, be a blessing to them as well, Lord. We just ask, Lord, to be in all that we say and do this morning. We'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. If you'll take your hymn, we'll turn over song number 274. So 274. We'll sing America the Beautiful this morning. Song number 274, America the Beautiful. And we'll just do verses 1, 2, and 4 here. So first, second, and last. Song 274, America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America. God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet who stern impassioned stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America. God make thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in love. 
O beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining see. Thank you so much. Amen. Wonderful singing this morning. It is good to be an American. We are Amen. so blessed. I, uh, I like the saying, proud to be American. I am proud to be an American. A godly pride. There is a thing that is, uh, a pride that is wicked and vile, and it is at the top of God's hate list. But we can be proud of what God has done. And he has set forth a nation, and he has blessed this nation above any other nation uh, outside of Israel, his chosen people. And I think it's because of the emphasis that the that America puts on the Word of God. If you look out in any other country, if they've got a copy of the Word of God, there is a, uh, a very good chance it was printed here in the United States. If there is anyone who is saved in the world today, chances are they were won to Christ by missionaries sent from the United States. Um, I, I kind of like what uh, Brother King said. We we are a small town. We have our own little issues here in this town, but we are still a, a good county, a good count, town. And I love our our city. Uh, that applies to America as well. We we have our problems. We are a nation that has or is trying their best to forget God, trying to uh, get away from biblical things. I appreciate Brother Watts and his ministry here in Kentucky and what he taught uh, for us a few weeks ago. But we are still a one nation under God, and He has blessed this nation. I'm so thankful for for our country, and I'm thankful for our independence, the freedom that we do have to to uh to do this today to meet together to the freedom of worship the freedom to uh, assemble together and I'm so thankful for that I'll probably say more about that later on when I'm able to preach fully um but uh, I'm thankful for America as far as announcements go um we have our VBS coming up and that is coming up very quickly July the 17th through the 23rd We've got the stuff kind of settled now, the order of service and what we're going to be doing, decorations, all that. Got that taken care of this week. We'll discuss that more in depth tonight. Uh, Brother Christopher will be preaching for us. Brother Anthony's not going to be able to make it, so I'm going to preach as well for just a few minutes, and then we will uh, go over that in our meeting tonight. But in our bulletins, I, we gave everybody a copy of the uh, flyer my wife made for this, our superhero BBS, and we have smaller ones made up i haven't got these printed off yet but we've got smaller ones made up to hand out and give out and be inviting people out um we're going to try to make it as fun as we can for the kids it's going to be dc versus marvel two different teams and everything they do throughout the week is going to earn them points and the winning team at the end gets to pie the villain in the face uh i, I got a feeling i'm going to be the villain so all the kids will get to put a pie in my face. We did that a few years ago, but Lee and I, and the kids absolutely loved it. Um, we got our fill of Cool Whip, so. But it was it was a good time. So we're going to have that. Um, kind of the schedule is going to be an opener, icebreaker game, some songs, things like that. Then we're going to do what's about an hour, hour and a half of rotation. We're going to split up into three different groups. One will go out and do... Uh, a video that Brother Jared likes to show during VBS on creation. And then while they're doing that, they'll get some snacks. Um, we're, I think we're just going to do cookies and juice boxes and things. And then while they're doing that, there'll be another group in here getting the preaching. And then the third group will be outside doing some games. Um, so, and then we'll just keep rotating 
throughout the, the night. So um, that will go on from Monday through Friday. Saturday, we're going to have a special day. Uh, we're going to try to go out and invite all the kids that have been coming. We're going to try to invite their families for a special service on Sunday. We will have our first responders here. Our hometown heroes is what I call them. Uh, and they will be showing off their uh, their equipment to the kids, things like that. But we'll also have a big dinner that day. Uh, and we're going to try to use that as a way to get the whole family uh, here to the church. So um, we're excited. I think it's going to turn out very well. Looking forward to that. So I think that is all the announcements. Appreciate Brother Lee. He came and mowed for us this week. Um, while I'm still trying to, to recover. So I appreciate him, appreciate his willingness to teach and preach this morning and Brother Christopher this evening. And then I uh, do pray for my mom. Her, she's, most everyone saw the, her ankle. They do, they now don't know if it was a brown recluse bite or if it's a blood clot. Uh, she's going this week to get more tests run on it and try to figure out what's going on with her ankle. But it look, it's looking pretty, pretty bad. So I'm assuming that's why they're not here this morning. I believe that is all the announcements. So at this time, we'll go ahead and take up our offering. Brother Dean, Brother Christopher. Give as God has given to you. Brother Christopher, if you don't mind, ask the blessing. Um, All right, if you take your hymnal one more time this morning, song number 157, song 157, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. When you find your place, if you don't mind standing one more time, we'll stretch, we'll sing all three verses this morning. Song 157, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. <clears throat> when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Thank you so much. You may be seated. 
All right. At this time, we have a special. Um, my wife begged and pleaded and requested, pretty much told me to switch places with her. So I compromised and did what she said. So I was saying this morning, I've been on my way to heaven for a long, long time, and many things have happened that's clouded up my mind, but I am more determined to walk the narrow way. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm going to ring. A band of angels in the choir, I want to hear them sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gate. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. I've been through the lonesome valley. I've climbed the highest hill. I've known the joy of living in the center of God's will. I've watched the angels come and take my loved ones home to stay. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring. A band of angels in the choir, I wanna hear them sing. Oh, there'll be a lot of friends waiting when I walk through the gate. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring. A band of angels in the choir, I want to hear them sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gate. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. All right, if you take your Bibles this morning, we will be in the book of Jonah. In the book of Jonah. Oh, people are laughing already. Book of Jonah. Oh, there for a few years, that's all I preached was Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. But no, uh, I got this thought yesterday and uh, told the Sunday school this morning um, that uh, Brother Eddie had asked me a few days ago if I didn't mind doing Sunday school. I guess he had talked to... Uh, um, Brother Jared uh, Williams, who'll be doing our vacation Bible school, and I guess they were on the phone for about, oh, he said 15 minutes. It's probably closer to four minutes. 15 minutes. About 15 minutes, and he said he hurt so bad. He said, I don't think I could do Sunday school. I said, all right, I'll do Sunday school. So I was like, well, God, you've already given me a sermon for Sunday. I'll go ahead and teach that for Sunday school, but you're going to have to give me something else. I was like, well, it's uh, it'll be uh, July the 2nd, and I said, that's two days before Independence Day. Let me just go ahead and turn this lapel mic, mic on. I said, that's two days before Independence Day. I said, let's see if we can do a, a sermon on freedom. And uh, and then so I was like, Levi, what do you want me to preach on? He said, uh, Jonah. I said, okay, I can, might be able to do that. Then Ellie's like, preach on Jonah. I said, okay, I guess I'll be preaching on Jonah. So, uh, so God graciously uh, gave me a couple of thoughts this morning. I don't believe we'll be long at all this morning. And... Uh, but uh, I do want to look at this uh, book of Jonah. I've preached a lot out of the book of Jonah, but uh, I've never looked at this thought, I don't believe. Um, but uh, here, I just want to read the first couple of verses here in Jonah, chapter number one. Uh, we'll jump into uh, uh, the message and we'll go from there. Uh, so Jonah, chapter number one, verse one says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. So let's go ahead and pray one more time, and then we'll um, look at this uh, this thought this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. Uh, we ask the Lord to be with the message, Lord. I ask the Lord that you would help me to say only what you want me to say, Lord, exactly the way you want me to say it. May it be a blessing to somebody uh, this morning, Lord, and ask the Lord that you'd speak through me, Lord, and we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here, Jonah chapter number one, you find, you find God. God comes to Jonah. Uh, Jonah is a prophet, um, and we're going to um, assume uh, that Jonah is a saved man. Uh, he is a prophet. He's a preacher of God. He, God has chosen him uh, to do this ministry and to go and be a missionary to Nineveh. So here, uh, so we're going to uh, basically we're going to look at two 
people this morning. We're going to look at Jonah, the saved person, and we're going to look at Nineveh. Um, the Bible says here that Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it for their wickedness has come up before me. So we have Jonah on one side, and then we have Nineveh on the other, this big uh, city. Um, most people believe there's at least a million people in this city, a very wicked city, a lost city. So we're going to look at these two groups of people. Um, so looking through the book of Jonah, you got a few characters. you got Jonah. Uh, well, the first one you see is God. God is the, is the, uh, is the, uh, you, so you, so here in the story, you have a character, you have God, you have Jonah, you have the people of Nineveh. Uh, you going through there, you'll have, um, the ship, um, you'll have the, the ship master, the captain there, you'll have the, the people on the ship, you'll have the whale. Um, and, but ultimately, once you get past chapter number two, chapter number two and chapter number three, you see you got Jonah and you got Nineveh and you got God. So, uh, here I want to take a look at, uh, at this thing, I didn't even title this, but we're going to look at freedom this morning. We're going to look at freedom for a saved person and freedom for a lost person. And uh, so here we're looking at Jonah, chapter number one. We find here that God says, go to Nineveh. Now, Jonah's saved. Jonah is already saved. Uh, he is uh, he is a preacher. Uh, in fact, he's a prophet. In fact, you see him in uh, either First Kings or Second Kings, one of the two. And uh, he has already um, prophesied for God. So. We know he's already been doing this for a little bit, and uh, but you have Jonah, and God says go to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was the capital city of Syria. Uh, it was the Assyrian uh, uh, Empire, and they were very wicked. In fact, uh, the Bible says here that God said their wickedness has come up before me, and it was a very wicked place. Um, and and you find that uh, God only mentions the wickedness of of groups of people just a few times in the Bible. Uh, the first one is. Uh, the entire world you find in the book of uh, Genesis over in chapter number uh, six. Verse number one says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born of them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of, of uh, men, that they were fair, that they took them wives of all they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always, not always strive with man, for that he, will, he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants on, in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them, and some became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of, his, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So here we find the first time that God saw the wickedness of man and he noticed it. And here it says he it's, it's so bad in the book of Genesis in chapter number six that he was sorry he even created man in the first place. It said it repented him in his heart. He was sad almost that he had created man. And I have a thought on that somewhere in here. I've got a bunch of thoughts that I'm just not fully fledged out. That uh, um, and uh, um, and I wrote down here. Uh, this thought on uh, when is God when God is sorry and the first thing I wrote was when God repented that He made man Genesis chapter six verse number seven or chapter six verses six and seven but uh, that's not part of the message this morning but uh, I don't even know where that came from uh, but uh, here we find that God in Genesis chapter number six saw that the wickedness of man was great and repented of him that He had made man He was sorry He even created him in the first place because man was only thinking about wickedness and evil continually. And that's all they did. They thought of, it's almost like they were wicked, and then they thought of ways to be more wicked, and that's all they lived for was being evil and being wicked. And so we know there in Genesis chapter number 6 that God ultimately was going to destroy the world and found, but Noah was uh, was perfect and upright, and God saved Noah and his family from the flood. And we know from the story of uh, Noah and the flood. Uh, but here in Jonah chapter number 1, you find almost the same um, phrase here it says arise go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me so God notices their wickedness it is terrible uh, and I have preached on how wicked and how terrible and things that they did uh, to the Jewish people to the um, to the Hebrews to the uh, Israel God's chosen people and Jonah didn't want to go Jonah was already uh, prejudiced against them um, because they were they were tormentors they were evil towards the, the people of God. He was afraid to go. And uh, so Jonah, we know he rose 
inflating the torsion. So the first thing I wrote down is that uh, freedom, uh, well, up to here, that, um, the first thing I wrote down is that sin always brings bondage. Sin always brings bondage. So here we find that Jonah, uh, chapter number one, uh, God says, go to Nineveh. Now, Jonah saves. And uh, so there's no doubt about that. He's a preacher. Uh, God has chosen him. And I believe he's a saved man. Uh, and But uh, God says, you know what? Go to Nineveh. Now, Jonah's going to disobey. And disobedience is a sin. Well, we know that. Um, but uh, and uh, but Jonah, chapter number three, or one verse number three says, But Jonah rose to flee in the Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. And he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go in them on the Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So we know that Jonah decides he's going to get on the ship at Joppa and go to Tarshish. That's a very hard word to say, so we'll stop. Uh, which is in the complete opposite direction, almost 5,000 miles in the opposite direction from uh, Nineveh. And we, we looked at that in one sermon as well. So we know that Jonah disobeys and he goes. And the next thing we know is God sends a storm. So God's going to punish him. And ultimately, we find that Jonah ends up in bondage. Chapter 1, verse number 17. And it says, Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah is physically in bondage at this point because of sin. Um, now, uh, if you look over in uh, uh, here, so on one side, we have sin brings bondage to a saved individual. God is going to do something to get their attention. God put him through the storm to get his attention. God put him in a well. At this point, he is physically in, in bondage. In fact, chapter number two, verse number um, two, it says, And I cried by reason of my affliction, affliction and uh, Unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice, for thou hast cast me into deep in the midst of the seas. The flood compassed me about all thy billows, and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet will I look toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Um, so. Jonah realizes he is in bondage. He is physically, God had put him in well jail. He is in bondage. He is in, he's in well jail. The bars. So, uh, so here, Jonah is in bondage because of sin. Now, on the flip side, looking over here, we have the children or the people of Nineveh. Uh, sin always brings bondage. Now, God says, look, I need you to go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Uh, in verse number, th uh, chapter number three, uh, you find that the uh, the people of Nineveh, um, and uh, uh, verse number, uh, let me go to verse one, chapter three, verse one. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah rose, went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So God says, Look. They are wicked, and because of them, their bondage, because of that, I'm going to destroy them. So sin had put them in bondage. Their bondage was ultimate destruction that God was going to give unto them. So here we have the saved individual. We have the child of God who is in bondage because of sin, and then we have these people who are about to be overthrown, about to be destroyed because of sin, because of their wickedness. So number one, sin always brings bondage. Number two, freedom allows us to make a choice. So here, back to Jonah. So Jonah is, uh, he's a saved individual. He's a preacher. God says, go to Nineveh. He is not in bondage at this point. He is, he's completely free. He can do whatever uh, he wants. God says, look, I'm going, I want you to go to Nineveh. He is free to make a decision. He makes a choice. He, of course, disobeys and God sends him to, uh, uh, to whale jail. He ends up in the belly of the well three days and three nights because of his disobedience. Back to chapter, uh, point number one, sin always brings bondage. So, But God, because of freedom, gave him a choice. In chapter number three, verse number one, and the Lord or the Lord came unto Jonah a second time, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. And Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh. So he made a choice again. So freedom always gives choice. Once he was out of the well, he was free again. He had a choice. God says, look, I want you to go back to go to Nineveh now. 
and ultimately at this point made the right choice. But freedom always gives us the option and allows us to make a choice. So God says, and then Jonah, so looking at Jonah, the saved person, says, I want you to do something. He is free to choose, chooses wrong the first time. Thankfully, God gave him a second chance, chooses right the second time. We have that freedom. We have that choice. Now, sometimes our, our choices um, bring about consequences, and we, we see that here in Jonah. But then, again, the lost people over here, the people of Nineveh, that wicked city, so wicked that God wants to destroy them, and we find here that they have a choice. If you look over in uh, chapter number three, verse number uh, four, and Jonah began to enter a city a day's journey and cried and said, yet 40 days and none of us shall be overthrown. He preaches an eight word sermon. I bet you all wish we would only preach eight words every once in a while, right? But uh, preaches an eight word sermon. Yet 40 days and none of us shall be overthrown. Eight words. Now, that's a lot of syllables. Try counting that one. <laughs> Not counting syllables. but uh, preaches eight words, and you find God gives them a choice. In verse number five, uh, chapter three, verse number or five, the first phrase says, and the people of Nineveh believed God. They took, they had the freedom to choose. God gave them the opportunity. At this point, they're going to be destroyed. They are in wickedness. They are in bondage. God is going to destroy them, but he gives them the freedom to make that choice. They allowed them to make the choice. Now, Nineveh could have been you're like, oh, who's this guy? And, uh, you know, went ahead and, and persecuted and martyred and, and, and killed Jonah. But they didn't. They, they had the opportunity. They had a choice. They could have rejected God, but they, took, but they made the decision to accept God. So they made that decision. But freedom allows us to make a choice. And the same thing today. God gives us ample opportunity. Uh, to make choices, and God doesn't, and it baffles, and I've talked to people um, that I've worked with over the years, how they're like, well, why wouldn't God just turn you into a robot, and you just do, because that's not the way God designed us, God made us, um, gave us the free will, gave us the ability to make choices, and gave us the freedom to do so, and I'm thankful he has, now sometimes we make the wrong choice, and we learn from it, we have those Wonderful character building, learning opportunities. Character builder. And um, and God does that. And he gives us the opportunity to do so, um, baby. So, we, no, we don't want to do that. But also we can show others what not to do. Uh, thankfully, growing up, I had an older brother. And I learned a lot what not to do because he was uh, really good at doing what he was supposed to do. So, uh, but, um, but God gives us the freedom uh, to make a choice. Uh, and um, point number three I wrote down, God always gives the opportunity for freedom. Always. So no matter what bondage we're in as a Christian or um, as a lost individual, God gives us the opportunity of freedom. Um, Jonah chapter number two, and I read verses one through seven already, or two through seven, but verse one says, Jonah chapter number two, verse one says, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. So, we find here that Jonah is in the belly of the whale, and I read down um, to uh, oh, verse number six. And then verse number seven says, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. And so uh, here, Jonah is at the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the earth. In fact, the Bible says there, this, uh, verse number six, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet... Thou hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. I believe God would have kept Jonah in the well till he died, had he not, um, had he not uh, decided he would would go ahead and do what God wanted him to do. But um, but he didn't. But God gave him the opportunity for freedom. Spent three days and three nights. That's about three days and three nights longer than I would ever want to be in a well. But here he's in there three days and three nights, and he prays unto God. And so God gives him opportunity to just kill him. Uh, ver in chapter number 1, verse number um, 15, says, And they took up Jonah, cast him forth into the sea. The sea ceased from a raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, made a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So God didn't just ultimately drown Jonah immediately. 
his walling with the whale. Now, he didn't let the whale kill him. He gave him three days and three nights, gave him the opportunity for freedom. And uh, thankful, and I'm very thankful that God gives us the opportunity when we disobey or when we, we fall into sin, when we fall into that bondage. And you see that, and I could have used several different uh, books of the Bible to illustrate this. I could have uh, pulled out uh, any, almost any chapter of the book of Judges. You find this, this cycle in the book of Judges. You'll find that people fall into sin, and then from sin they fall into servitude or, or slavery, and then they um, fall, and then they supplication, and then find prayer. And you find the same thing here in Jonah. Falls into sin, and then you find, find him trapped in the whale, and then you find him supplication, you find him praying, and then finally God always sends a Savior. And so, um, so I could have used anybody out of the book of, uh, of Judges pretty much for this. I uh, could have pulled out Gideon. I could have pulled out uh, when he fought the, the Midianites because the, they were being vexed by the Midianites. Uh, for for um, in the story of Gideon, I could have done the Philistines and Samson. Uh, but uh, but Levi wanted Jonah, so I picked Jonah. But here you have. Uh, but here you find I don't know where I was going. But God gave him the opportunity to, for freedom, and so here you find Jonah is. Uh, so not only did he sin and then fall into slavery or servitude or or in this case, he fell into a whale. Uh, and then you find him praying, supplication, begging God for deliverance. And it says here, he says, um, When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, unto thine holy temple. So you find that, and then finally you find salvation. But God always gives the opportunity for freedom. Now, Jonah could not have taken that opportunity. He could have just sat in the well until he died. But... He didn't, and so he took the opportunity and got free. And it's the same way in our life. When we fall into sin, and Satan makes a way of making sin pleasurable. In fact, the Bible says that um, sin is pleasurable for a season. Um, but uh, so, but we, we fall into sin, um, and uh, but God always makes a way and an opportunity for freedom. So we look at Jonah, um, but also with the children... Uh, or the people of Nineveh, God also gives them the opportunity for freedom. Uh, it says here that uh, in verse number three of chapter three, so Jonah rose, went into Nineveh, uh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. Jonah began in the inner city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Gave him forty days. Gave him the opportunity. He gave him the opportunity to get right. He didn't just say, Oh, you're going to be destroyed tomorrow. No, gave him forty that Gave him the opportunity for freedom. So God doesn't just give the opportunity for freedom to, to save people who get into sin, but it's also lost people as well. So you see the comparison here. God always gives the opportunity for freedom. Number four, I wrote this. So number one, I wrote down, sin always brings bondage. Number two, freedom allows us to make a choice. Number three, God always gives the opportunity for freedom. Number four, freedom is obtained by doing what is uncomfortable. And you'll see it for both of these. And uh, you can also, I uh, know uh, Independence Day, uh, we celebrate the 4th of July, because on uh, July the 4th, 1776, the Second Continental Congress convened and wrote a declaration of independence drafted by Thomas Jefferson, signed by Jefferson, Washington, Benjamin Franklin, several people, Declaration of Independence. And because of that, now, of course, then you have the Revolutionary War, which lasted until um about eight years so it was about eight years um total but looking at that in, a, in just looking at our country we won our freedom by doing what was uncomfortable we stood up we fought um fought against the british um army in fact the british army was the most um skillful army in the world at that time they had just finished the uh defeating the french right before the american so they were they were experienced. They knew what was going on. We had militias, and thankfully we had God on our side. It's the only way we want. But looking at our country, we won our freedom by doing what is uncomfortable. And But looking at Jonah and looking at the people in Nineveh, also the same thing. So Jonah is going to do what he's uncomfortable with. And looking over Jonah chapter 2, verse number 9, says, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So Jonah said, finally says, look, I'll do what you want me to do. I promised you that I would do what, he said, I will pay that that I have vowed. He had made a promise to God that he would do what God wanted him to do. 
He said, I'll sacrifice myself with thanksgiving, with the voice of thanksgiving. I believe Jonah was prepared to die as soon as he entered Nineveh. He said, look, I'll keep my promise. I'll do what you want me to do. If you want me to physically sacrifice myself by going to these wicked people, because that's what they do. They, this was, they were the people who invented crucifixion. They were, they, it was wicked, wicked what they would do to people. And uh, Jonah says, you know what? If that's what you want me to do. I'll go ahead and do it. I will happily do so. And, uh, of course, verse 10, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon dry land. But he had decided he was going to do what he was not comfortable with. In fact, in verse number uh, uh, 3 of chapter number 3, it says, And Jonah rose, went into Nineveh. So he said, Look, I'm not comfortable. I am afraid of these people. And he was rightly to be so, in my opinion. It was uh, a, a very wicked people. They hated the Jewish people. Um, but he... Uh, He's uncomfortable. He said, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. If you want me to sacrifice myself by walking into the city? Because I look different. I act different. I'm going to tell them they're going to be destroyed. All right. I'll do it. And ultimately, we know that uh, so Jonah, Jonah obtained his freedom by doing what was uncomfortable. Now, on the flip side, people in Nineveh, wicked wicked people. We find here that they, they made the choice, that God had given them the, the freedom to make a choice, uh, gave them an opportunity for freedom. Verse number 5 in chapter 3 says, And people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed the fast, put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them unto the least of them. Now, I don't know what sackcloth ultimately is. I, I feel like it's like those old flower sacks that people would make dresses and stuff out of, but probably a lot um, rougher, very itchy, very uncomfortable sackcloth. That's made out of sacks. And then uh, from the least of them, uh, or from the greatest of them to the least of them, verse 6, for the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, from his nice, comfortable throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and satin ashes. Now, I'm not sure how comfortable that is, sitting in ashes and wearing itchy clothing. Now, I'm wearing Oxford cotton this morning. It's hot. I don't know why I would wear that in July, but it's not the softest material either. And but uh, you, you ever get that uh, oh that grandmother who wants to knit a sweater or buy you a sweater like here take this sweater and you put it on and you're like itching all the time. Could you imagine having that all in your entire body? You're uncomfortable, but you know what? That's what it takes to obtain freedom is doing what you're uncomfortable with. When we go out, we knock on somebody's door and says, "Hi, I'm um, Lee. I'm from." Uh, Southeastern Baptist Church, just out in the neighborhood, inviting folks out to church. You go to church anywhere. So we go out and you invite people to church. You put them on the spot. And then ultimately you say, look, you may never come out and visit me. You may never uh, have the opportunity to visit our church. But look, we may never see each other again here on earth, but we may have the opportunity in heaven. Do you know for sure 100% that you are saved? So when you ask somebody that, they're uncomfortable already. They're uncomfortable because you're on the door. You're wearing a collared shirt, you know dress really nice for this area and uh, sometimes a shirt and a tie and so you made them uncomfortable and they're and then they're going to ultimately they're either going to say something to get you to go away for a little bit or they might break down with like no i don't know that and then you take them through the plan of salvation they've already stepped out of their comfort zone allowed you to share the plan of salvation and they have gotten saved because they've done what they were uncomfortable with so the only way to obtain freedom is doing stepping out of your comfort zone and doing the uncomfortable and then lastly this morning, and then we'll, we'll be out of here in just a few minutes, ultimately all freedom is a gift from God. So looking at Jonah, saved man, fell into bondage, fell into sin, God gave him the opportunity to be released from that bondage, to, to obtain freedom, um, and he steps out of his comfort zone. He says, look, I'll go ahead and gladly sacrifice myself. Verse 10, you find, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah on the dry land. That was ultimately God. God spake unto the fish. God said, look, you're free. That is my gift. I'm going to get you out of the belly of the well. Now, you're free. So the last thing, um, and then we're not going to look at chapter number four. Um, but, uh, but, you know, here in Jonah's bondage, God says, look, you're free. As my gift to you, you have done what you, uh, you've learned your lesson. You're going to do what I want you to do. That is my gift to you. So ultimately, freedom comes is a gift from God. And we know that uh, 
for by wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And on the flip side, looking at the people of Nineveh, this wicked people, God says, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 40 days. He said, I'm giving you 40 days. Now, I like verse number, um, my favorite verse in this entire chapter or in this entire book of Jonah, four chapters, is verse number five. So Jonah goes in, he preaches, and you find verse five, and the people of Nineveh believed God. They didn't believe Jonah. They didn't care what Jonah was. They didn't care who Jonah was. They didn't care anything about him. In fact, you never find that they even mentioned talking to Jonah at all. It says they believed God. And then verse number, so if you go down, uh, verse number eight, it says, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hand. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? So and this is the king of Nineveh saying, look, everybody, get uncomfortable. Quit doing what you're used to doing. Quit being evil. Turn from your evil ways. Do what's right. I know that's not what we tell you to do, but do it at this point. Let's see. And then says, look, maybe God will change his mind. And then verse number 10, and God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them. He did it not. So ultimately. Their bondage, their bondage they were under was a, was ultimate destruction. God was going to destroy them. He's going to wipe them off the planet. Now, ultimately, a hundred years later, in the book of Nahum, you find that He does so. But at this point, because Jonah obeyed, ultimately, and uh, made the right decision, used that freedom to preach unto these people, they believed God and God, and they turned from the evil ways. They took the opportunity for freedom that God gave them. They stepped out of their comfort zone. They accepted what God was going to do. And ultimately, God saw their works. That they repented from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them. And he did it not. Ultimately, they retained their freedom as a gift from God. And it's the same way this morning. Maybe this morning, as a saved person, whether under the sound of my voice or watching via live stream, or maybe you'll watch the recording later. Maybe this morning you're saved. Maybe you've accepted Christ as your Savior. Maybe you've just fallen into sin, you've fallen into bondage. God will make an opportunity. There's always an opportunity. If you're still breathing, if you're still on this side of, of the dirt, God has a plan for you. God will give you freedom and give you the opportunity to do so. You just accept it. You accept his freedom, step out of your comfort zone, do what he needs you to do. He'll give you the freedom. He'll give you freedom from the bondage of sin. And uh, he will do so. But maybe this morning you're not in Savior. Maybe you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. There is a gift. You're under a bondage of sin, but not only that, you are bound for hell this morning if you're not saved. Now you're bound for ultimate destruction, just like the people of Nineveh. God had said, look, 40 days, I'm going to destroy them. I don't want them on the earth anymore. Not so bad that he wanted to wipe out the entire planet, just this group of people. This, this big city of over a million people, God wanted to wipe them off because they were so evil, so wicked. But God says, look, go preach. Jonah did so. They believed God. They turned from their evil ways, and God gave them the gift of salvation that day. Now, this morning, maybe you're not saved. God, has, God wants to give you that gift. I already quoted um, Romans Is for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Maybe you're not saved this morning, and I pray and I hope this morning that you accept that gift, you accept the freedom. As we celebrate Independence Day, as we celebrate our freedom as a as a country, maybe we also celebrate the freedom that God has given us. So with every head bowed, every eye closed this morning, we'll just have a quick moment of invitation. Maybe you're not saved pray this morning that uh, you do get saved. Maybe that's you this morning. You say, Brother Lee, I don't know 100% sure I'm saved. If that's just you. Just slip your hand up. Don't want to embarrass you. Don't want to point you out. Just want to pray for you that you would uh, receive that gift this morning. If that's you, just slip your hand up. Or maybe this morning, I'm not going to ask for hands this morning, but uh, between you and God, maybe you know that you are, uh, you're in bondage to sin. Uh, maybe it's a little sin. Maybe it's what we would consider a big sin, but either way, you're in bondage and you need some freedom. And maybe you need that this morning. If that's you this morning, the altar is open and just do business with God this morning. Let's go ahead. We'll pray. We'll open up the 
the invitation. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, thank you for the opportunity to preach this morning. Ask Lord now that you bless this invitation. We ask this in Jesus' name. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you stand to your feet, we'll just have a quick moment of invitation. The altar is open if you need to do business with God. If you're able to come down and do so, and the altar is a wonderful place to pray, get alone with God, ask him for help. But you can do so at your seat. But if you need to do business with God, please do so this morning. Anything, anybody got anything they'd like to say before we dismiss this morning? Word of testimony or anything this morning at all? If not, we'll go ahead and be dismissed in a word of prayer this morning. And Brother Anthony, if you don't mind dismissing us, Brother.